Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from hard disks within an X-RAID array based on a Netgear NAS device. You will also learn how to enable FTP protocol and configure a shy folder in ReadyNAS. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. In this Netgear device, known as ReadyNAS, the disks which are connected and used to store data are automatically combined into an X-RAID disk array. This technology can automatically take all the disk capacity which is not currently in use and make it redundant regardless of the size and type of disk combined this way. All server functionality is managed by a Linux beta operating system known as NAS OS for Netgear. All Netgear devices can be classified into two groups. The first group comprises devices produced before 2013 and managed by NAS OS version 5 or lower. In these devices, the data storage scheme looks like this. Disks are divided into partitions, which are then combined into a RAID system with the MD technology. And then MD arrays are combined into a unified LVM volume. As to the file system, such configurations tend to use EXT. The second group includes devices using NAS OS 6 and produced in 2013 or later. These modern Netgear storage systems uh, treat data differently. Yes, their hard disks are still combined into a RAID system with the MD technology, but the next level is BTRFS file system instead of LVM. Just as any other storage device, such systems may suffer from breakdowns, hardware and software failures. That is why, when choosing a data recovery tool to restore data from disk arrays based on ReadyNAS, you should know it if the tool supports the file system used with the specific network drive, depending on the type of the storage device. Any changes you make to the RAID level of your ReadyNAS volume will erase all data. That is why, before changing the RAID level or modifying other settings, which may potentially erase the disks, it is crucial to have a backup copy of important information and keep it on another hard disk to prevent data loss. If some information was accidentally deleted, hard disks were formatted or the storage device was damaged. In all of these cases, you will need a specialized software product to recover your data. In today's video, I'll also show you how to choose a suitable tool for the job. For starters, let's explore this X-ray technology to get a basic understanding of how it works before we choose a recovery tool and start using it. X-ray is an auto-expandable RAID technology that is available only on ReadyNAS systems. With X-ray, you don't need to know intricate details about RAID to administer your system. x ray allows you to add storage space without reformatting your drives or moving your data to another location. Because the expansion happens online, you can continue to use your ReadyNAS system while the volume capacity increases. Because x ray is a single-volume architecture, if you configure your hard disk drives to use x ray your storage system has only one volume that is made up of all installed hard disk drives. x rays single-volume architecture has two major advantages – easy system management and auto-expansion. If you replace existing disks with larger capacity disks, x ray automatically accommodates the new disks. With x ray you can configure the system with one hard disk, add a second disk for data protection and add more disks later for additional storage capacity. Keep in mind, though, that x ray requires a minimum of two hard disks to provide protection against disk failure. This RAID tag uses the capacity of one disk for data storage and reserves the capacity of a second disk for data protection, which allows the volume to recreate data if a disk fails. In a two-disk system, the usable storage space is one disk. In a three-disk system, the usable storage space is two disks. In general, the total capacity of your storage system equals the capacity of all your disks minus the capacity of one disk. In this picture on the screen, you can see how x ray uses new disks. The first disk that you install is used for initial, unprotected storage space. The second disk that you install is reserved for data protection, its parity information. Installing additional disks increases your storage space. 
although you can reuse the physical disk from another system to add capacity, any existing data on the disk must be removed before the disk can be added to the X-ray volume. If there is any important data on the disk, remember to copy it to another storage device before proceeding. Now that we know what X-ray is, the disk array is built automatically, so we can go on to find out how to configure network access to the drive. Start by opening the Services tab, Standard File Protocols. To enable FTP protocol, check the box next to the option and click to apply it. Now that FTP is active, we can connect to the server, add a shared folder and configure network access. To add a new shared folder, choose the Shared tab, click Add Shared Resources, give the folder name, add description and password if necessary, then click to apply the changes. Now that the shared folder is ready, let's configure network access to this directory. The directory is added with default access. To configure access to a shared resource, go to the page List of shared resources. Next to the new folder, click on the network protocol that needs to be enabled. After that, modify the default access type only for reading or read and write. And click Apply. Network access is active, so now you can connect to the server by FTP and write some information to the disk. Unfortunately, this NAS device doesn't have a recycle bin feature for shared folders, so if something gets removed accidentally, there is no way to restore it. Until you get to use Hetman Red Recovery, hardware and software failures, wrong configuration, accidental removal or formatting may cause a major data loss from the disk storage inside your NAS device. In any of these situations, you'll need a reliable tool to get your information back. Not all recovery software products support this RAID type, so you have to keep this aspect in mind when choosing which tool to use. Also, most programs supporting X-RAID are designed in such a way that they don't find much data if one of the disks in the array was damaged. On the other hand, Hetman RAID Recovery is a comprehensive solution for NAS data recovery to help you restore your files in many different scenarios, including the following. Hardware and software failures, wrong configuration, accidentally removed files, disk formatting, and so on. This program supports the most popular file systems, including those using NAS devices, and all popular RAID types, including X-RAID. It can build an X-RAID system even if one disk is missing, and still let you recover all the data you need. Bear in mind that before starting the data recovery operations, you should prepare some free disk space with a capacity equal to the amount of data you are planning to recover from your disk array. Take the disks out of the NAS device and connect them to a Windows computer. Make sure that all disks are recognized by the Windows Integrated Disk Management Utility. Right-click on the Start menu and select Disk Management. If you are suggested to initialize the disks, don't agree. This can erase the remaining data. If you are trying to recover data from a disk array and the motherboard of the computer where you want to connect the disks doesn't have enough set of ports for all those hard disks, you can connect all but one disk, because this RAID type remains operable even if one of the disks is missing. As we remember, one of the disks is used to store parity information for others. Install and run Hetman RAID Recovery. As I said before, here is how information is distributed across the disks. The first disk contains the operating system and data, and the second one is a parity disk, and all other disks will expand the storage space for the first disk. At the beginning of the disk you have service data, then the data partition, and these partitions are combined into a spent JBOD volume, which is displayed in this program as a local hard disk. Here are the disks, each beginning with a dedicated space for service data, followed by data partitions and some reserved free space. Here is the second disk, containing parity data and two additional hard disks. And below, there is our network drive, a spent volume consisting of four disks. If the program manages to identify it properly, you will see its capacity and file system type displayed here. 
To illustrate how the program works, I deliberately excluded it with the first disk, as this RAID type is based on JBOD, so all information is primarily written to the first disk until it's full and only then to other disks you have in this array. In the case with a missing disk, the program is supposed to read the parity disk and then build and display the restored disk array. To search for information, right-click on the disk and choose Open. Select the scan type and start the analysis. The program will analyze the disks and display their contents when the operation is complete. As you can see, it has found all the data stored on the network drive, and in the case with x rate the data is intact even though the one disk is missing. If you are looking for files that have been removed, you can identify them by red crosses. Select the files you want to recover. Click Recovery. Select where you want to save them and click Recover again. When the recovery process is over, you'll find all of the files in the folder you have chosen. It is important to remember, however, that if such disk array suffers damage to more than one disk, you won't be able to recover all the data. Most files will either be damaged or unavailable for preview and recovery. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.